And what's going on, fam? This is your boy Fontaine, VIPSoundLab.com. Just had a tutorial request how to get the custom graphic images inside of your machine studio. As we all know, when you hit File, Preferences, you go to Library, User. When you add your custom libraries, they show up here. Okay? Then what happens is when you're over here inside your uh, machine, if you, you know, implement your, your images correctly, they'll show up like this. So when you click on the images, show up over here as well as inside your uh, your hardware controller if you have the uh, the studio but it also shows up here inside the software so basically to get that done you're gonna need an imaging program me personally I use uh, Photoshop and this is one of my drum kits right here this is a custom uh, graphic that I was working on for the, uh, the drum kit itself on the site uh, we have a ton of templates like when you come onto the site let's see where is it have it on here somewhere for like plugins we have this zip folder right here it has a ton of templates in here uh, let's see we have some other ones here for plugins and basically what happens is a template is probably the best way to uh, go about it because it gives you the correct sizes for example here's a drum kit that I had did for my Harlem drums HD uh, drum kit so as you can see right here when I hover my mouse over this on uh, Windows anyway that MST artwork right here you see it says 134 times 66 this VB artwork right here is saying 96 times 47 the logo right here is saying 240 times 196 so this one right here would have to be have a transparent background and if you could look really close I don't know if you can see that but you see the lettering right there it's perfectly centered it says Harlem Drums HD that's what's gonna show up uh, on that one screen on machine or inside your uh, your hardware controller and right here this is the uh, the PNG file for the VB logo that's more or less like this one right here is more or less for let me pull this up is for what's over here okay and let me see the artwork is more or less what's gonna show up over here you know this one right here will be inside the uh, studio controller this one right here will be more or less um on the machine studio this one right here the VB is what's going to show up inside of here so I believe the MS the MS just stands for machine studio and that's how it's going to show up in your machine studio and these two right here are more or less for the uh, the software side of things your drum kit is going to have to be named here where it says meta you put your drum kit name right before here and there's other templates too for like plugins and stuff like that like um like right here, I did one for Nexus 2. Same thing. You know, the plugin sizes are a little bit different. So basically, whatever you're going to need as far as sizes go, they're going to be inside these template folders. Plugins work a little bit different because you have uh, a plugin uh, little graphic here. So basically, you're just going to duplicate basically what you see inside these template folders, and that's how they'll, they'll basically show up. So what I like to do. I like to create a blank folder and what I'll do is I'll rename it the exact same name of the kit okay well it's not gonna let me do it because it's it doesn't want to duplicate what's on the desktop so let me create a new folder like this let me put this folder inside here and now rename it so Windows doesn't think it's a dupli a duplicate's being made. All right, so now we have a blank folder with the exact same name of the drum kit here. Okay, so what I like to do sometimes, I'll grab, you know, for example, this is a template. I'll grab these files because they have the sizes that I need. Close that out because I don't need it. Go inside here and paste them and paste them inside here. Even though, um, let me create bigger size on that even though it's um the same name as a drum kit that already exists it doesn't matter because I'm just getting the graphics and I'll show you what I mean in a minute so for example this drum kit name being that is scanned inside my library you want to have the exact same name that is inside your library 
so that machine will recognize it. See that? It has to be the exact same name as the drum kit dot meta. Okay. So now you got that out the way. This one right here that shows up inside the machine is a 227 times 47. This file again is the one that's going to show up right here. So a lot of times that one's kind of hard to get it to get it centered. You know, you're going to have to mess around with the graphics to get the imaging uh, centered correctly and things of that nature. So basically I already did that one because what you see back here on my desktop where it says VIP sound lab, I was using this image right here to uh, go for that particular part of machine right here. Okay. So being that I have that one done here, it is right here. I already have that one done. So let's go back to Photoshop. I'm not sure what I mean. Basically, you're just going to resize this image and save it as a PNG, you know, whatever custom artwork that you have, that's basically what you're going to do with it. So for example, let's go ahead and this one right here says 96 times 47. Okay. So I would go back to my image. I'm using Photoshop in this particular situation. You can use, you know, whatever you want to use. I will go here. I'll put 96 times 47 like that. The image gets shrunken down to the correct size. And what I like to do, if I want the file save as desktop, I'm going to look for that folder. Go for a PNG file to match. Now you notice how it shows up inside that little blank folder. So I'm using, I'm going off this template to get things rolling. So right here, if I save this as VB artwork, now it's going to overwrite the file that's here inside the folder already. So in other words, it's going to take what we just resize and pop it in right there. It asks, do I want to replace it? I press yes. Okay. Now we know that's in there. Okay. So now if I go back to the same image, wait, hold on here. Bring the image size back up. Okay. Go back to that folder. You see right there, there's our VB artwork. Now there's another one right here, MST artwork. It says 134 times 66. So we go right here. We put in 134 times 66. The image gets resized again. We go to file, save as. There's the artwork. We're going to now replace that artwork. We're going to save it. Okay. And then I could just go back to the image size again. So the process just keeps repeating, in other words. So now. The other one works a little bit different. Okay, now we have this one done. We have that one done. There is uh, the VB logo. Again, this one, it works the same. You know, right here, you see right here, it says 227 by 47. So whatever image you want to show up on that screen, you have it here, resize the image, go here and save it. Now the VB, I'm rather the MST logo. This is the one that shows up inside the machine. This works a little bit different. You see that one says 240 times 196, but it has to have a transparent background for this, these words in the background. Cause again, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, the screen capture, I'll try to zoom in on that, but the words of your drum kit goes back here. Okay. So that's, what's going to show up inside your machine studio, 240 times 196. So in other words, you'd have to have a new file. You go to new transparent background, 240. times 196 wait a minute I'm getting I'm getting it doesn't matter I can resize it let me see here what was that image that image was yeah I'm right 240 times 196 all right so we got the image here 240 times 196 okay so now you want to have the name of your kit uh, to appear here so what I like to do sometimes I'll take this layer right here and I'll duplicate this layer 
and maybe I'll go to like my brush or something like that and make sure my cap locks in on. And let's say if I take a black background like this here and just fill this in right quick. Why? Because sometimes the uh, the lettering can be hard to see. And I'll drop that in the background, jump back over in this layer, then go to your text. And, you know, for this particular situation, I'll use regular. Courier new, that's fine. I know this is too big, maybe like 14, something like that. We'll put the, uh, the color is white. I'll go to my desktop. It doesn't have to be anything long and lengthy. I'll just put, let's say, I'll just put track architects platinum. I'll just put track architects platinum. Copy that. We'll go over here. Track architects platinum. And let's center that a little bit better. Maybe like about right here. I'm not using any grid icons or anything like that. I'm eyeballing this. Put it like that. That that looks pretty good like that. We'll take the transform controls off. I could change that around. I can make that bigger. So now what happens is we lose the background on that. So now we have a nice transparent image in the background. See, otherwise, if you were doing it without that black background, it'd be hard to see. All right, so now we take this, we save it as a PNG file. Back to our folder, back in here. It's not gonna show up unless it's a PNG, PNG. There it is, MST logo, we press that. Now it's gonna overwrite this file that says Harlem Drums, press save. All right, and that's pretty much it as far as that goes. And we'll just so close this down. We're gonna take this kit. Well, machine will probably trip out if I move that because I have it scanned. I don't wanna move the library on that. But anyway, here's the folder. And if you look real close, you probably can't see it, but it's back there in the background, the lettering that we just did. Okay, so now we have the metadata the VB logo, the artwork, as well as, the, the, in other words, these two right here is the machine studio artwork. Okay, the imaging and the wording. In other words, this right here is for the uh, machine 2.0 software, the imaging and the logo, okay? And this is the file that uh, lets machine know exactly um, what it's gonna be scanning. So you take this folder, you copy it, and what you're going to do is you're going to go into your public documents, NI resources, imaging, and you drop that inside here like this here. Okay. So now once you have that in there, what happens is when you go back to machine, I have to find that library and refresh it. Let's see right here, rescan it. And now our imaging shows up here. So as you can see right here, now the kit itself, it says Track Architects VIP Sound Lab. Okay. And this part right here, I probably could have centered this a little bit better by using the uh, the stretching tool and just compress that in a little bit more. But that's pretty much how it works. And then your images show up here. So now when I go down here to where the kit is, you have this nice little image right here for the Track Architects drum kit. So that's pretty much it. And the process repeats. You just go over and over and over and over and over until you have all your kits uh, imaging in there. So you see, it's not really bad. It's not long. It's not tedious. But that's if you want to put a personal touch on some things and what happens is on the machine studio um it's going to have the imaging also and i'll take a quick uh, snapshot of that and i'll throw it in the video and on the website we have some custom image templates if you want to get in there and you know use some of these templates that we do have in there because we have some for plugins as well as drum kits and things of that nature so that's pretty much it, man. It's your boy Fontaine, VIPSoundLab.com, showing you how to create your custom images for machine. And that's pretty much it. I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.